Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello, this is Buddy C. Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. Today we have Lori and Brian and Drew and Oscar. Good to have you guys today. Not going to spend much time on announcements, that kind of thing. Go to buddyc.org. Got a lot of good resources there, including a number of ways to stay sober at any time, but especially during the holidays. We have a whole list there, a PDF that you could uh, download and print off and post in your local groups if you want to. Nice. So lots of good stuff there for you. Lots of good stuff. Today, we will be discussing the 25th verse of the Tao Te Ching. Um, I've got one more to post. I'll post the 24th. I've been putting those out one every four days to try to catch up if uh, y'all haven't noticed. So there's a lot there during the month of November. Uh, I suggest going back and listening to some of those if you... Uh, before we get started, why don't you guys give me a way that uh, you step up your program if you do during the holidays? Because a lot of people have difficulty with family and all those things. I'll begin. I'll go with it's just another day. If the sun's rising and setting and things are going on just like any other day of the year. So if I keep that in mind. I won't let these expectations of others and of myself spoil events. And there's a lot of things we can do these just in case you get squirrely, have this ready, that kind of thing. But I'd like to hear how you guys, I'll just call on you if you don't mind. And just something that you do. And even if it's not an issue for you, something you might tell a sponsee to do during the holidays that's a little unique to being around groups of people like a lot of times we do during the holidays. Oscar, I'll start with you, sir. What's what's a tool you use or suggest for the holidays? Oh, I, I applied one. There are no holidays yet here, but they are coming. So it's a bit other dates than it's not as long, as long in a, as in the States. But we have a holiday coming uh, the first week of uh, December. And it's kind of annoying. I feel always think it's annoying in a family and what do I have to do? And then I thought, okay, what if I apply 12 steps on this? Then I take a look at the feeling I have and combine, okay, every character defect I give to God and I combine it with the letting go technique. And it is, I, I look at my annoyance and then I think, okay, if there's annoyance, there also is the opposite because it's one. So the opposite of annoyance is gladness or happiness or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you name it. And then I say to myself, okay, do I have the courage to let go of my resistance to happiness for the holidays? <laughs> ah. and it, it's a kind of fun to do. And then... I, I did the action. I invited my family at my home to make uh, small pizzas and have small presents and fun stuff. And so it's all perception. Looking at the holidays with disgust is just a perception, which is not so much worth, especially since I'm an addict and my perception is very often far too negative than it could be. It's Natural way to see it as a negative right. thing. So I try, try to change it. <laughs> yeah, I've tried. Thank you, Oscar. I've tried to let go of that all the time when something's good, waiting on the other shoe to drop, so to speak, and said, yeah. no, it doesn't have to be that way. Why am I always anticipating the worst or something negative to go along with this? Thank you, Oscar. That's good. Brian, how about you, sir? Any particular tools no. you use or suggest? Acceptance and surrender. For me, I try to avoid putting any expectations on it. 
I know how I'd like for it to look, but it's not going to look that way. And it's, it's a difficult time of the year for me. I've, I've been with a trifecta. I've got Thanksgiving, I've got my birthday, and then I've got Christmas. And, and really it's, it's all three are a, are a tough time for me. I've got two family members left that, that I haven't, haven't heard from or haven't spoken to. And geez, over, it's probably been close to 15 years. And then my wife's family, it's like going to a dry well. And it was just the three of us and it was a bummer, but I just try to make the best of it. And it wasn't a bad time. My wife's recuperating from surgery, doing well. And I, I could feel myself getting negative. I smoked some ribs and both my wife and son were happy with them. Me, I didn't think they were worth a shit, but. I just kept that to myself, to be yeah. honest. So I definitely try to get in 86, 87, and 88 every night before I go to bed and think about my day and reflect on that. So that's what I try to do. Thanks, Brian. Excellent. You were talking about in the big book, 86, 87, 87 88. 88. Isn't, isn't that the ongoing when we get up in the morning, retire at night? Yeah, we retire at night, reflecting on our day. Yeah, that's a good practice all the time. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Drew, what do you have, sir? What helped me out the last couple of days was just being present wherever I was, not being in my mind, not being concerned with as we mentioned in chapter 24 last week, shining the spotlight on myself, whether it's doing it internally, putting a lot of emphasis on my own self thoughts and, and thoughts about how am I doing? How are people perceiving me or outwardly trying to get the spotlight shined on myself by trying to, trying to make people feel this way about me or that way about me. Um, holidays are usually a time when I see a lot of people for the, the the only time that year. A lot of friends who've moved off to the suburbs or something like that, who I don't really see that much, but I've known for several years. Like last night, we all got together at a friend's house. She's been hosting us the day after Thanksgiving for gosh, probably 10 years now. And that always provoked a lot of anxiety for me because I wanted, I wanted people to perceive me a certain way. I was, I'd also feel inadequate about seeing others being able to be social really easily. And that's something I've always struggled with my whole life. So going to that event was something that would bring up a lot of feelings and thoughts that I, I just didn't really want to have. So in the past, I would use too much during those events to get away from those thoughts and feelings. But um, but last night, I, I was just able to be present with everybody. I just sat back, let, let everybody chat. And there was <laughs> a lot going on. It was overwhelming, lots of people in a small space, but uh, I, I was able to take my mind off of myself and listen to others and ask questions, get to know people a little bit better, let them talk to me without me expecting anything, any results just being there with friends who like having a listener. So that's the gift I have is being a good listener, making a conscious effort to be present, take my mind off of myself, my own fears and inadequacies and maybe resentments or jealousies for this person or that person. Just enjoy the people I'm with, enjoy the company, enjoy these people who do care about me and, and realize that it's 
I can leave when I want. <laughs> exactly. no, nobody's keeping me there and nobody's going to be upset if, if I leave a little earlier than others. So just trying to loosen my control over, over everything, just being present, being thankful for who I'm with. That, that really helps. Thanks, Drew. That was good. Lori, what do you have, ma'am? Well, thank you for asking. It's interesting to compare what I do versus what I tell my sponsee. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? So let's take my own advice here. What I told her was, what a great opportunity to practice all your skills. All your 10 and 11 step skills get to be practiced when you're around your family because they got those buttons down. They know how to push every one of them. Ones you haven't worked on, ones you didn't even know existed. <clears throat> That's my experience anyway. I came up with a new word. I have these great pens and they're temporary tattoo pens. If I come up with a great, something to remind me because I need it right in front of my face. So this time it's called, it's BASE, Ooh, B-A-S-E, breathe, breathe, accept or appreciate. If you can't appreciate it, at least accept it. Breathe, accept, smile. Oh, so many times in my meditations, I notice when I finally let go of all my expectations and all my judgments, there's just this nice little smile on my face. So that's the smile I'm going for. And then E is whatever you want, enjoy, enthuse, encourage, empower, whatever E you want. But for me, it's breathe, accept, smile, and enjoy. Ah, that's good. Thank you, Lori. You're welcome. I'm looking at the 30 tools to stay sober before, during, and after the holidays. We we came up with these the, the first year we had the Fourth Dimensioners online 9 p.m. meeting. And coming up on the holidays during the pandemic, we just started making a list. And so we kept adding to it till we had 30. They may have more now. I'll just read through them really quick. Attend as many, number one, attend as many AA meetings as possible and participate. Get a sponsor and work the steps. That's two. Three, when tempted, think the drink through and remind yourself why you stopped. Four, practice gratitude first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Five, take care of your body, eat right, sleep right, exercise, and drink lots of water. Six, watch videos about the devastating effects of alcohol and listen to podcasts focus on sobriety. Remember, a lot of these are just the ones that the group suggested, so you don't have to agree with all of these or not. This is just how they stay sober. Take care. I said that one. Number seven, reach out to others in need with a text, email, voice message. Eight, get a sobriety app to track your day sober and dollars saved. Nine, embrace the cold, shut off the hot water. Okay. Ten, become an active part of a recovery community, online or in person. And remember that the difference between wellness and illness is we, not I. Yeah, I like that when somebody mentioned that in a meeting one night, the difference between wellness and illness is we, not I. 11, have a way out. Always have a way to leave if you start feeling uncomfortable. 12, accountability. Bring a sober friend or check in before and after the event. 13, keep a cup in your hand when you are attending a party or a family function. That is huge. You, you would be surprised if you've never thought about it, how huge that is. Because you have your cup in your hand, they're not going to offer you something else to drink. Lower your expectations of everyone at the event. <laughs> no one at the event will be more disappointed if you drink than you. Don't take anyone's actions personally. 17. You may even tell them you will not be drinking tonight. And for sure, ask them to put you on a pot of coffee. 18, if you start getting antsy, start cleaning up, play with the kids, go for a walk, call your sponsor or a friend in recovery. 19, 
have a time limit of how long you're staying. 20, it is time to leave when I hear the same story for a second time at a higher decibel. <laughs> I, I think that was one of mine. 21, prepare for the event. Take a nap, have a snack, go to an online meeting, be emotionally, spiritually, and physically ready, or reconsider attending. 22, halt. Take action when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Now, you can download all these under resources at buddyc.org. There's actually a PDF posted, too. So you could take that and post it in your meeting. 23, take advantage of one or more of the many service opportunities during the holidays. 24, attend an online meeting at any moment before, during, or after the event and pray for each person attending until the craving passes. 25, always know when and where your next AA meeting will be before you leave the current meeting and have a backup meeting just in case you need it. 26, tell the bartenders that you are not drinking alcohol tonight. 27, don't do anything out of obligation. You always have a choice. 28, feelings of or thoughts are not facts. Feelings or thoughts are not facts. They have no value unless we give them value. 29, no thank you is a complete sentence. And 30, the holiday is no different than any other day. That's some good stuff, guys. Use that. Pass that on to sponsees. May even need to pass it on to your sponsor. Who knows? All right. Anything else to add to that, guys, before we get into the 25th verse? Thank you. I thought... I just thought that was important for us to go through here. It's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So we're just knee deep in all this holiday stuff coming up and different parties and different events and all these things, some of which we're expected to go to, but I I put my sobriety first. So even if I'm expected to be at something, if I feel it's going to threaten my sobriety, uh, I choose not to go. I don't have those events now that bother me, but when that was stressed to me early in sobriety, that my sobriety was first. So if there was anything that I thought would made me uncomfortable, I would avoid it until I was comfortable enough to do it. Maybe different next year, who knows, or it may not. So whatever the case, be conscious of your sobriety, be mindful of your sobriety. Okay, the 25th verse. I'll read the Stephen Mitchell. There was something formless and perfect before the universe was born. It is serene, empty, solitary, unchanging, infinite, eternally present. It is the mother of the universe. For lack of a better name, I call it the Tao. It flows through all things, inside and outside, and returns to the origin of all things. The Tao is great. The universe is great. Earth is great. Man is great. These are the four great powers. Man follows. The earth follows. The universe follows the Tao. And the Tao follows only itself. Anyone else have a translation they'd like to read? Buddy, I'll read the uh, Jeff Pepper. Okay. In clear English. Or sometimes clear English. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) That's his goal anyway, right? How can the Tao is never that clear. Right. It has to be intuitively seen. So, yeah. yeah. Something formless appeared before the birth of heaven and earth. Quiet, sparse. It stands alone, unchanging. It moves everywhere endlessly. It could be the mother of the world. I don't know its name. Its symbol is Tao. If I had to name it, I would call it great. <clears throat> greatness speaks departure departure speaks distance speaks of distance distance speaks of returning Tao is great heaven is great earth is great the king is also great in this land there are four great ones and the king is one of them people obey earth earth obeys heaven heaven obeys Tao. Tao obeys what is natural thank you brian Oscar, you want to read the star for us? Yes, I will. Thanks. 
something formless, complete in itself, there before heaven and earth, tranquil, fast, standing alone, unchanging. It provides all things, yet cannot be exhausted. It is the mother of the universe. I do not know its name, so I call it Tao. Forced to name it further, I call it the greatness of all things, the end of all endings. I call it that which is beyond the beyond, that to which all things return. From Tao comes all greatness. It makes heaven great, it makes earth great, it makes man great. Mankind depends on the laws of the earth. Earth depends on the laws of the heaven. Heaven depends on the laws of Tao. But Tao depends on itself alone. Supremely free self, it rests in its own nature. Thanks. Thanks, Oscar. Any comments? Yeah, I have very nice Dutch translation, which has very good comments, which is definitely the best author of, of Chinese literature. And he has an, some word, he spent some words on the last part where mankind depends on the law. And it's about this verb, depends. In the one you read, out, it was follows. Yeah. But, but he declares or says or thinks, or I don't know, that it is the man is one with earth, earth is one with heaven, heaven is one with Tao. So it's in it, it's all in itself, and it's the non dualistic translation, definitely. It's all one, and it's one in the one is in the other so in the end Tao is in man and man is in Tao that's what it's saying and uh, so that was my uh, contribution from the Dutch professor <laughs> thank you Oscar I'll read my interpretation I, I titled this one love there was something containing everything before the world began Empty, complete, unchanging, tranquil, formless, ever-giving, and in constant motion without effort. This something permeates everything, accessible everywhere. If I were to impose a name, I would call it the Tao, the Way, or Higher Power. This Way is functioning everywhere, ever-flowing and always returning. That's what you were talking about, Oscar. Man follows earth, earth follows the universe, the universe follows the way. The way always follows its nature of love. These four are the great ones. They naturally follow each other in a continual harmonious dance of love. On second thought, I think I will call this something love. Okay. Naturally follows each other in a continual harmonious dance. Hmm. Drew. This verse is just really peaceful to me. Just listening to it and envisioning everything as it's as it's being talked about. I just get a real big sense of peace with this verse. It, it just it reminds me how, like Oscar mentioned, non dualism. I think that's a really good phrase to use for this verse that everything is a part of everything else <clears throat> and everything flows from a genuine sense of peace and calm and serenity that's something that that i can tap into whenever i want and i'm less able to do that whenever i'm whenever i'm focused on myself whenever i do have that dualistic mindset of there's me and there's everything else and Focusing on myself just keeps me from having those qualities that that you mentioned at the beginning of your translation, which I really like. The kind of the image that I get in this verse is just just an image of the whole universe and just me as a very small part of it. That that 
everything is cyclical, everything comes from everything else, everything goes back to everything else. From dust we came, from dust we shall return, all of that. And I, I, I just get a really good sense of peace from this verse. It just reminds me that whenever I want to, I can tap into all of that goodness that's out there, that it'll, it'll always be there for me. That's what I got from it. Thank you, Drew. We think, I think one thing, one thing I see in this is we think in a linear, the the Western thought is this door opens and this one, that everything's linear. And I see that here in the description. They said, if we have to describe it, then we go linear is what we do. It says, okay, if I have to put a name on it, and then the Tao falls universe, or man falls, the earth falls universe, blah, 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 seems to be a linear motion. But but it's not, because they all do this dance. It's a cyclical, the whole thing. And I was thinking about, this morning I read the 24-hour meditation for the day and i it really adds to this this is from the 24 hour day book this is the meditation for i never mentioned this or very rarely if you'd like to get all of the daily most of the daily readers aa readers the um, daily reflections 24 hours as bill sees it all of those uh, go to transitionsdaily.org and you can sign up for an email that 22,000 of your closest friends already get. Uh, and you can sign up for it there. The, the email list, it's an online AA group and it's not shared or marketed to or anything. But uh, that's a good way to get all the daily readers. It's, you can go to dailyaaemails.com or transitionsdaily.org and both point to the same place. Okay, this is the meditation for the day. My soul is restless till it finds its its rest in thee a river flows on until it loses itself in the sea our spirits long for rest in the spirit of god we yearn to realize a peace a rest a satisfaction that we have never found in the world or its pursuits some are not conscious of their need and shut the doors of their spirits against the spirit of god they are unable to have true peace. The line I really liked in that was a river flows on until it loses itself in the sea. Isn't that what happens spiritually for us? We just, I'll just lose myself in compassion. Really. When I choose to be of help instead of demanding help for me, it just all melts. Where does the river begin And where does the river end and the sea begin? It just all comes together. And I think that speaks to this cyclical nature of everything. Just it'd be like saying you have a hand. Yeah, that's a hand, but the hand's not the whole body. You can't say the hand is the body. The hand's part of the body, but it's not the whole thing. The same way I start realizing that we're all just one. And when I am kind to you, I'm really being kind to me. I don't understand. I still don't understand it, but I see the results of it now. And that's what the first thing we're told when we come into AA is become a part of, right? When you're in need, go help somebody. That's how we participate in this. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's interesting here, too. All the translations, I think talk about if they're forced to name it in some way they say that and the way that star said it he said forced to name it further and that's like putting for me it's like putting trying to describe what can't be described we talk about the strawberry how do you describe how strawberry tastes you can't you just gotta go taste one you gotta eat one gotta have one same with this. How do we describe the higher power? We That's not something that we can describe. But if we're forced and pushed, I think that's what he's talking about here. 
Yeah. Oscar. Yeah, I also have to think about the holidays and what you do and what you can do and what I did, like with the letting go and what Drew told about being present. It's just leaning back in the in the thing that doesn't change. In and here it says tranquil, fast, standing alone and unchanging. And nothing in this world and in time in this dimension is unchanging. But beyond all this drama and life and all this stuff is something, some kind of stillness or a presence or, and then you can't name it anymore. It's also fun to try to talk about it because we, the words are always, yeah, it's a word. We can point to it or touch it maybe or but with the holidays, what I did was pre- go to this, go to the stillness inside and there it's peaceful and, ni- and nice is not the word. It's okay. It's just the flow of everything which it, in which everything happens. So you've got, I experience it as, okay, everything is happening in this stillness, in this nothingness, in this Tao or greatness or hugeness or whatever. But I really recognize it as very helpful to apply this in things that could be experienced as annoying like holidays huh. or even l- like uh, so helping somebody helping somebody in my family or helping a friend or helping without need to help just it can be a, a, an annoying thing i have more important things to do and have this and have that and and then you can go back or I can go back into this stillness and then it's okay to do it. It's just okay. Forget about myself. Just forget about myself and being in this is a really nice way to live. And especially with holidays when you have to meet family and you have to obligations and nice dress and all the stuff, it's fun, if you look at it as fun. <laughs> For me, if I'm not careful, I will start comparing and uh, think back on what I could think of as mistakes in life. And you get used to, it's a time when if we're not careful, we can get trapped in all those things, or I can for sure. You brought out something, Oscar, that I wanted to talk about, too. It's not very often we hear the word that something is not changing, because we talk about change all the time. And here it says the Tao is unchanging. I think what's unchanging is the nature. They touched on it, actually, in First John in the Bible when they said that God is love, because for me, I tap this and get in this flow that they're talking about through introducing loving kindness or compassion, whatever name you want to put on it, but some kind of uh, openness and helpfulness to others is how I participate in this whole dance. I was at my holiday at my Thanksgiving, lots of people there and I was an outsider it was a cousin and all of their family and their family's family and all of that so uh, i didn't have any of my close relatives there my daughter's on vacation actually oscar she just went through italy she was in italy for a few days she's flying back tomorrow she's in germany now but she did we did thanksgiving early so i didn't have anything today so i went down to florida and visited relatives so i was getting a little I wish I had a big family, like immediate family like this, all that stuff going on in my, starting in my head. I said, wait a minute. I just got up and started cleaning up, started helping. There was all kinds of things to help with. 
there was no shortage of cleanup. So I just started cleaning things up, got out of my head, started helping. And just a little act like that got me back in that flow, got me out of myself. And that that help never changes. Anytime I help others, I help me. And that does not change. That does not change. And now that word love really is a verb too. It's not a noun. It's not a person. I think they would have left that out of first John out of the Bible, quite honestly, if they really knew what they were writing, because that moved God from being a person to being an action. When you think about it, because even when I, just approach someone open heart heartedly and just listen. That's a form of compassion for me not to think I'm the greatest in the universe and give you respect is compassion. We don't realize all those little ways that we can introduce this flow into our life. Yes, that's good. It's easy to forget those things. Yeah. Lori. Hey, buddy. I, that just made me think of the, experience I had with this with the crowd the other day <laughs> Thanksgiving what I've noticed is when I make space in my brain it's scary it's scary right we have all these expectations and I have all these expectations and obsessive continuous thoughts that just yeah they're there it is what it is to be able to notice them and let it go literally I picture it almost like energy flowing in and flowing out just flowing in and flowing out and I'm just the observer I'm just like whoa that's curious I wonder why I feel envious they've got a family that little kid I shift it from judgment to curiosity and that allows me to create some space for exactly what you were talking about how can I be in service like how can I just get out of this conversation in my head all together or ask a question so the space created allows me to be creative about interactions conversations my behavior it allows for some yeah new way just a different new way to be present and notice without judging even all the stuff I'm that's going through my head this verse today is so, uh, I think of it like very esoteric. I went to a liberal arts college, Catholic liberal arts college out in California. And of course, we spent all this time on the liberal arts, the big books, Euclid, Ptolemy, Aristotle, Plato, all that great stuff. And this reminds me of that sort of conversation. And I can remember listening to converse arguments like back and forth and da, da, da. it's Oh, yeah, whatever. You're not going to get it. You're never going to get it. You're not meant to get it. Live and enjoy life and move on. But I think humans are just incredibly, what do we call it in the big book? Grandiose. That we even can imagine that we might figure it out. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, anyway. I'm totally content and happy to be able to participate in family events without running, screaming outside and away <laughs> from people or getting upset or letting it upset me. So that's brilliant. And practice. Wow. Just practice. So it's, that's it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lori. Really, the practice for me is having the awareness to step out of the way more mm. than anything else. Cause Indeed. when I take me off the pedestal and not make it all about me, uh, then it flows so much better and even better for me too. <laughs> it's not as if it doesn't do well for me because it does. It's more interesting. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. We, I go with all these expectations and when, I step out of the way, I'm able to surrender more of those expectations and actually have a better event than what I would otherwise if I made it all about me. I learned that really early with the kids. If we're doing something and I made it when they were little and I, anytime, 
when I make whatever I'm doing about the person I'm with or when the kids were little about them, it just seemed to make everything work instead of orchestrating everything to be about me and exactly how I wanted it. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so if we step out of the way, we come to the part in ourselves that is unchanging, right? Yes. And that's very weird because that should be who we are. Because, And I recognize this also because I don't feel changed in my life. I feel the same always. Yeah, I, I'm always me. But the me is not my name or my profession or my age, or it's something else. And only when I get my name and my profession and, and everything out of the way, I come to this unchanging part. And that's really a miracle. It's really beautiful. So it's always there. This flow is always there. It's, it can't be, it can't n not be there. Only the noise is so loud that in in my head and my heart, and the noise is too loud sometimes. And then, and it's so nice to get these tools like helping or doing the dishes or looking for someone, looking out for someone or, or, or go to the imagination or the, the life of a kid and, and, and work with her just because for her. So I, I get out of the way. It's best mantra I've, ever heard I get out of the way I just get out of the way when I go outside and it's raining I get out of the way and it doesn't matter if it's rained it's just what it is very nice yeah Oscar you hit the nail on the head there with the what we're really looking for is that thing that is unchangeable that's always what we're looking for but yet we're let me speak for myself the way I seek what is unchangeable is with things that change. So I can never see it. <laughs> I'm always like, okay, I seek, if I seek happiness with success, I, if I equate those two, it's not going to happen because I'm seeking the unchangeable with things that change. Yeah, you have to step out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> And the way I do that is not by making it about them instead of me, by this compassion business. Yeah, and it has to do with identification, I think, because we identify with our bodies, and, but our bodies change. My body has been changed, I think, seven times this lifetime. A completely different body. Every cell has changed. Everything has changed. I am not the same as 10 years ago the same body but i'm the same i'm the same but i have to get out of this the identification has to get less important and that's why i appreciate so much the anonymity the anonymity is for me the anonymity is about letting this person go and just be with the presence and that's what i like very much about uh, this tradition of anonymity. Because it's not about us, Oscar. Yeah. Because the part we talk about is what's changing. And and if we're focused on what's changing, we're never going to find the formless or the complete. Yeah. Because that formless and complete does not change. Exactly. And then we are restless and unhappy and discontent and all this. <laughs> And what I finally learned I had to do, because I wanted to figure the thing out, right? Because I have to know. When I was a kid, we had pinball machines when I was a kid, so I'm showing my age. And there was pinball machines in all the little uh, little corner grocery, little corner stores around, the, out in the country and all. As a matter of fact, my teenage job was going around collecting the quarters out of the pinball machines and all those things. First thing I do is not play. I read the instructions because I want to win. The point isn't to play and enjoy it. The point is to have the high score. <laughs> so I immediately look, say, okay, how do I win here? And, and 
I seem to approach all of life that way. How can I be number one in this? Not enjoy what's going on, but just everyone know I'm better than they are. <laughs> or at least I think that. And that's what this is. That's, that's part of what this is talking about. We can't get to the peace and joy by seeking it with these externals. It's not going to happen. And the only constant that doesn't change is love, is compassion. How do we get that compassion into whatever's going on? And what I finally had to do was keep my head down, quit trying to figure the thing out, and just do the next action that showed itself. The next compassionate action, just keep doing it. And if I didn't know what to do, I was told to pray for someone else that might be looking for the same thing or go to a meeting and listen to people that you don't think have anything to offer you. I can go to a meeting closed-minded or I can go with an open heart. If I go closed-minded just to maybe show the the latest quote I heard or some something, make my try to impress a bunch of drunks. Now that's really <laughs> <laughs> you you think you need to impress a bunch of drunks? Yeah, that kind of thing. But I learned meetings were about sharing experience, strength, and hope. And if I needed it, I'd, I'd sit and listen. And I sit and listen anyway. And if someone's already shared what I was going to share, I don't need to share it again just so it comes from my mouth. The difference between wellness and illness is we, not I. Any other comments? Guys, y'all have a good week. And we hope to see you next week. Thank you. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars. Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.